right, guys. Welcome into the 2023 Cranberry Park Ice Bowl. Jim here from Disc Golf Bra. We got a great show for you. Got to give a huge thanks to Heiser Disc Sports in Vernon, Connecticut with their new location for sponsoring this coverage. Up top, we've got a couple buddies, some local legends, Bobby Copperthwaite at minus seven, Marvin Manalo minus three, Dalton at minus one, Corey Kelly at plus two for the card today. Let's go ahead and check in on them. The multi-talented Bobby Copperthwaite brushing off all the tee pads. He's a legend. He's got the lead going in. Marvin Manalo, another local legend from Stanford. This is probably his home course. He plays often, forehand dominant. And Dalton Bailey with the best hair in Connecticut. Although he's going to moving, he's moving soon. We're going to miss him. Happy to have him on the card today. Rounding out the card, Corey Kelly, Team Heiser Discs, Team Dark Ace, Team Gateway with a great mustache. Let's go ahead and check out our first hole, par three, 325. We're playing these shorter tees compared to last year. Still with the OB on the left-hand side. The drone is going on more of a forehand route here. Uh, 325, just kind of a straight shot here with a little flex if you're throwing something more over stable backhand. We'll see a bunch of different lines from these guys. Bobby's going to start off with his Color Glow Rock 3. We've seen this disc on coverage many a times. This should just be kind of a stock shot for Bobby here. Gets a little too turny on it. That thing might be a little more beat in these days. Right outside circle 2, a little more than he wanted left there. Marvin, definitely a forehand dominant player. We're going to see our first look at his forehand. This is his star PD2. Mostly throws in of a... And this is just kind of a stock shot for him. Dodging that out of bounds. Little skip, nestle up nicely next to the basket. That's a great shot. Great start for Marvin. Dalton's going to throw this Metal Flake Gator. He throws a lot of power. A uh, little turn on this one. This is going to fade back. Just lovely. Just recently joining team finish line. So we're going to see some of those discs out of him today. Corey as well just joined uh, team Gateway. So we're going to see a lot out of him. This is his Assassin. Just looking to get a little turn on it. Needed a little more height there. Uh, still have a look though. Right outside circle one. Corey going with these uh, SSS Wizards. Great in the snow. Kind of a half bid there, but that'll leave him a nice tap in par. Bobby a little closer than I thought. Maybe 75 out. Downhill putt. Kind of a half run out of him. Conditions were not bad today. There was some snow around lunchtime during the throw-off, but a little sloshy for these guys. Nothing too bad. And Dalton's first time on coverage. He's saying, I'm not nervous. Great birdie to start. This is a really good birdie hole. Kind of a must-get for these guys. Marvin doing the same. Really good start for these guys. Corey's going to tap in his par. Bobby the same. Something about this hole I really like. There's always dogs walking. Always a little bit of a delay, but kind of sets you up for the course overall. That's going to move us over to hole two. Very, very challenging. Par three, 454. If the distance wasn't enough, you have to dodge a multitude of trees. These telephone poles that are a lot bigger than they should be. The wires come into play. Very tight. You can see the short basket there. We're going way past. You need something straight. You need something that goes far, doesn't turn too much. Uh, it's a very, very, very good birdie. One of the signature holes, I would say, in this hole. Some great dogs, as you can see, just kind of walking around. All right, so we're going to see Marvin leading it off here. He's going to go to his first run boss, and he's going to find a little flex turnover line here. He's got to get sneaky behind this tree, gets one kick, gets two kicks. Center fairway. Great shot. Here's a star T-bird out of Dalton. And maybe just had to do that one on camera. Get that one out of the way. That's a tough one. This is uh, Bobby's signature. This is a Brinster T-Bird. You're going to see him throwing this one a lot. He's going to make this hole look super easy. Maybe he just missed that tree. Tough kick. Corey's going back to a different assassin. Different plastic here. Looking to get a little turn. Missed that biggest tree. And this is where this hole gets deadly when you're kind of just stuck back in these woods. Dalton going back to a gator or something, a little more fairway here. And that's really what you want to do. Just get back into a scoring position. Right in circle two, but he'll have a look. Corey going to a blue blade, similar to a firebird, I believe. Just looking to get a little flex out of it. 
And there, there, there's those telephone poles. They do come into play, unfortunately, right when you don't need them to. All right, this is our first look at Bobby's signature lefty flick. Not much he's looking at here. Maybe just kind of get a flex around that pole. And getting caught in these left side woods. Corey ended up right by the short basket, just looking to kind of get up and down here. Right in the back door there. I'll give him a long putt in. Super fun hole. This is an absolute great birdie. Really great par. Just want to get down there as far as far as he can. Another look at this forehand from Bobby. He's trying to find any sort of line on this hole. Super dangerous hole and a really great second hole on this course. Finding a bunch of trees on this one. He'll be away on this one. Going back to a gator here. Just looking to get up and down and still a little more left than he wanted. Marvin's going to try and capitalize here. Just put this AVR nice and close. Snug it up, which he does. Bobby trying to match this one. Run it as much as he can. Interesting ground play here with the snow and the leaves. Nothing too much to your advantage, but it can slip away really fast. Corey looking to get in for par. Just left a little low. Good run there from Dalton. Tough hole. These guys are getting some big numbers on this hole. Bogey for Dalton. Birdie bogey. If you start this course par par, you're pretty happy. Good birdie par from Marvin there. And we're going to see a little bit of a score swing here. So triple bogey for Bobby on the second hole. Not what he wanted. We got a tie up at first place and a double bogey from Corey. We got some interesting scores. It's going to lead us to hole three. Definitely more of a forehand dominant, maybe a backhand flip up to turnover shot here. 340, some good distance and a lot of trees in the way. If you're going to throw something forehand that stables up right around where the drone is here, you can go kind of sneak in this back door and follow the drone or follow the walking path and still put yourself in kind of a birdie position. Um, a lot of dog walkers on this course, a lot of rocks on this course, and a lot of trees. Truly a great Connecticut course. Uh, really good par three here. We're going to see Marvin go back to that boss, and this line is looking incredible. Back door is one of the trees that you have to miss, and just gets a great, great skip about pin high. That shot, he made that look so easy. Let's take another look at this one. Shout out to Cue Ball on the catch cam here. This was an incredible catch. Nestles up nicely. Great shot out of Marvin at a perfect time. We get scores tied up at top. Here's our first look at Dalton's forehand on a Halo Destroyer. And that's a great shot too. Forehand definitely the more so of a play on this one. Uh, Corey going back to this blade here. And a really good line as well. A little more left than he wants, but that'll work up and down for sure. We're going to see this interesting kind of backhand play from Bobby here. This looks like a beat-in destroyer. And that's what we're talking about, a hyzer to flip up to turn. It's a late tree, but still ends up great right where Marvin ended up as well. Really nice shot, kind of matched Marvin's flight on the backhand. All day, just great doggos out here all day. Corey looking to just go up and down here. This is Gateway's uh, zone, similar to a zone. Kind of fluff this one, but we'll end up kind of where all the other guys are. Not too many open lines from the tee, so right where these guys are ending up is incredible. Really good shots, made it look a little too easy on camera. This would be a nice par for Corey if he can dial this one in. That's a good run. Marvin hunting for birdies early on. Yeah, I just need a, one more inch of height on that one. Bobby putting with a misprint AVR there. It's a pretty looking one. Same exact spot that Marvin did. Send, send it up for these guys for a nice battle. Uh, obviously, Marvin and Bobby are great friends. It's going to be a really fun disc golf to watch. Unfortunate bogey for Corey. Dalton's going to tap in for his par. A lot of disc golf left for these guys. It's going to be a fun one. This one's moving definitely to one of my favorite holes on the entire course. One of the signature ones. One of the most wooded 
holes, probably in Connecticut. Really tough hole here, 371, hole four. Even tough to fly a drone through here. You wanna go either on this line that the drone is flying through with something straight that has a slight turn and finishes kind of deep. Um, you're gonna see an interesting line on a quarry as well. Getting to this rock wall is really, really nice. And then you have your ele elevated green. I'm sure birdies happen, I don't know how they happen. Uh, very, very well designed hole here. Bonus birdie to the thousandth percent. Definitely a little bit of rollaways on this green, although the leaves kind of slow everything up, you will get rollaways off the trees, off the pole. Um, there's kind of no safe spot on this hole, which makes it so good. All right, we got an Avery Star T-Bird out of Marvin here, looking to get as much distance as he can. Actually, a great second kick there, kind of saved him right in the middle. Dalton putting this uh, Zenith, I believe, on a nice line here. Yeah, got all the way through and hit those rocks. That was an incredible shot. Bobby going back to one of his destroyers here, showing us right up the gut. Takes a nice kind of kick and keeps pushing. We'll take that all day. All right, so this forehand line out of Corey is something I've never seen before. He's going for a forehand flex. I would never even think to do it on this hole, but finds a backdoor gap here and possibly CTB out of the group. Really good shot there. Marvin looking to go right up the gut here with a little turnover putter shot. And this is incredible. Really nice flight. Slides right up there. Want a little more distance on that, but that's a really nice line. Bobby going back to this backhand forehand with a zone. Sorry, left hand forehand with the zone. And that's great. Capitalizes even more than Marvin did. That'll be a tap in par for him. Let's see where Corey ended up. Yeah, right off that tree. I think that tree slowed him down a little bit. Real nice shot. So Dalton with the CTP here. It's got a tight window to make this putt. This would be an outstanding birdie. Just got a little little too cute with it there. Hard not to. Uh, kind of lined it up perfectly for a big putt. Going to pay the price. He's going to tap that in for bogey. Call that a bird dogey. It happens on this hole probably more than any hole. Marvin with a little elevation on this putt. Absolutely dead center. Great putt from Marvin. Marvin's an awesome putter to watch. Lots of confidence. Dead center. Good putt there from Corey. Dalton's going to tap in this for bogey. And Bobby's going to tap in for par as well. Huge shout out to our sponsors, Heiser Disc Sports. Check them out in Vernon, Connecticut. Amazing place, family run. Definitely check them out ASAP. It's gonna bring us to hole five, par three, 272 downhill. Kind of a breath of fresh air, although it's super wooded. Kind of a false sense of birdie here. You wanna throw something straight like a putter backhand, something that flips up and just kind of glides uh, as much as it can. Although if it gets too glidey, goes off the back, tendency to roll away happens often. Not much left in this one though, 272, you just want to throw something that gets down there, checks up and uh, tap in for birdie would be ideal. We're gonna see a little challenger out of Marvin here. Puts this on a little Anheuser flex, a little more stable than I expected. This one really stables up at the end. Looking for a little kind of straight more uh, anti flex there, didn't kind of get it out of it. Bobby's going to show us this whale putter shot. We've seen him just demolish this hole. Gets a little shanky here and just kind of keeps going. Oh, great kick. Definitely one of those holes that you want to birdie, kind of expect to birdie, and then you step up to the tee and you're like, this is kind of a tough birdie. We're going to see a forehand line out of Corey. Tough to get there with a speedy disc. You really got to hit the exact line or you're going to pay for it. 
Dalton going with the Sky God 4 here. Gets one kick, gets two kicks, gets three kicks. He'll have 80 left there for a look, and it's not going to be an unguarded look. One of the more tough holes for sure. <clears throat> Corey going with a forehand flex that looks great out of his hand, but just kind of keeps going and catches that hillside I was talking about earlier. A lot left for Corey, about 75 coming back up the hill. Thought it was really good off his hand. I did too, and then we got down there and realized. Dalton going with a little thumber here. Want to get a little more ground play and just kind of hits that tree and doesn't go anywhere. Good idea, though. Good thought. Bobby looking to jam this one in. Checks up nice on the bottom. Marvin with about 65 and not an easy look. This is a great line out of him, and this checks up nice. Big putt from Dalton there. Nice confidence. Just need a little bit lower. This is where Corey ended up in just kind of a jump putt distance. I'll have to tap that one in for bogey. Bobby with a solid par there. Knowing that Marvin's going to tap in for par as well. Bogey from Dalton. So no birdies on this hole. Really a hole that you expect you will birdie. Uh, but it becomes, slowly becomes a harder hole when you get down towards the green. That's going to move us to hole six, our first par four on the course, 446. There's a couple different lines that we're going to see. There's a forehand line that's off on the right of this drone that we might see. We saw with Kyle Moriarty last year. But as the drone is going, you want to throw something that's a backhand turnover or a nice forehand, something stable, landing around here as your landing zone and your second up shot. Not much left, maybe 250 into the green. Really following this drone pattern here and stabling up right towards the green. Definitely a hole that you want to get a birdie on. You just got to throw a really nice tee shot, something that gets you close and something that gives you a look. Marvin going back to this boss, and this was that forehand line I was talking about. Gets chewed up, but gets an amazing second kick. That was going into another time zone. Bobby going to this Leopard 3. He likes to put on a turnover. Just a little too turned over here. Decent spot, though. He'll have a look at a long second shot. This is the forehand look out of Corey. Unfortunately, it just gets a little too pushy, a little too glidy, a little too straight. Needs that to stable up a little earlier. He'll be at the bottom of the hill. Dalton going to this Zenith, just looking for a big turnover. Finds that middle gap tree. As you can see, not much that he's looking at. He's going Halo Destroyer here. A little turned over and advances, nah, 50 feet or so. This is where Marvin ended up after that tee shot. Makes it look easy with that forehand. Still has something left with that late tree kick, but that was looking real nice off his hand. This is Dalton's third, looking to get real close. And this stables up at the end. This is going to be real nice. Good shot. I think if that tree wasn't there, that probably would have been touching the pin. We're going to see where Corey ended up here, bottom of the hill, into a bush. We can see his caddy there supporting him the whole way. Looking to throw another one of those forehand flex routes. Tough to get through on this course, but he'll have uh, he'll have something. Look of an upshot. This is where Bobby ended up. He's going back to that forehand, forehand uh, lefty forehand. That's how you call it, lefty forehand. Good approach there. Uh, that'll give him a look. Marvin with a long circle two upshot. Yep. That's going to par up for him. Corey going back to that zone upshot approach. Gateway zone. And that's how you chalk it up. Here's Caddy's fired up there. Let's go. Let's get another look at this beauty. Unbelievable. That's the Devil Hawk, his gateway zone. That's the Devil Hawk. And check out this flip to the camera. Great shot there from Corey. First time on coverage, making it look super easy as well. This is where Dalton ended up. Confident putt there for par. Gets a real nice, real nice hopscotch into there. Good par, kind of used the whole length of the hole on that one. Big birdie out of Bobby there. 
give him a little distance on this lead. Confident putter all day. Him and Marvin are really fun to watch with their putting. Marvin tapping in for par. All comes down to the tee shot on this hole. You got to have a good or at least a decent tee shot to get that birdie. We're going to go back to an elevated hole here. We're going back up the hill. Hole seven, par four, 357. The distance is not far at all, but we're just going all the way up. You can see the short basket on the right here. Really want to throw something that kind of turns right as the drone turned. Land at the top of the hill, have this up shot in. Or if you have a huge forehand flex, you can get a look at an eagle possibly landing down in this ravine. But your second shot, you really want to land right about here or somewhere in that ravine for a birdie. Bobby going to a destroyer here, star destroyer, looking to get a big turn on this one. Kind of two routes. You can go left, you can go right. Bobby kind of goes right in the middle and just kind of stables up. Luckily, checks up right by that big tree. Should have a nice, decently easy second shot. Corey going back to something a little more stable. I think this is his dragon. Um, pink assassin there. Not too bad. Kind of where you want to be. Marvin looking to go big turnover here and almost black aces the short basket there. Would have been cool. Dalton with a ton of zip on his back end. Goes super back door. This was a little kind of shanky, but ended up with some good distance, so he wasn't too mad about it. That was a leopard three out of him. Um, just kind of got a little too flippy. Marvin finding these crazy sneaky lines all day. Out driving our camera person and uh, kind of right beyond the pin. That was a great shot. Corey looking to do another forehand flex. His flex was looking real nice all day. And this is where you want to end up on your second, right down in this ravine. Gets a good late kick there, but kind of loses distance towards the end. Bobby going to go with this ESP zone just to get up and down. Hopefully get a birdie for him. He puts a nice little, little bit of flex on this one. And yeah, he's played this hole a couple thousand times. It's a great shot. Here's another look at Dalton's tomahawk here. Way off on the right-hand side. Said he just missed his line by an inch. I like the idea. Uh, it's a tough throw on this course. Third shot coming from a knee here. Needs to kiss off that tree, which it does. That should be about pin high for him. Tough to putt with dogs barking here for Corey, but gives it a decent run. It's just part of the game on this course. Marvin would love a birdie here. Real nice run, just a little too low. Dalton maybe a little shook up from that tomahawk still. Bobby going back to back birdies, extending his lead, fired up. Good par there for Marvin. Tough bogey out of Dalton. Corey going to tap in his par as well. Really fun hole, a bunch of different lines you can take on that one. It's going to move us to hole eight, par three, another kind of stock forehand shot for most of these players or a kind of decently flip up to backhand turnover. 272, you can go in this inside route or follow the left hand gap there with the forehand and you want something that's going to kind of stable up right about now and not too beefy that it goes off to the right, just kind of straight straight to stable is the ideal ideal shot on this hole. Bobby looking to go something with a little bit of turn. I think this is his T-Bird or Leopard 3, excuse me. Just kind of never gets turned over and that tree helps him get right in the middle of the fairway but still a lot left. This is Corey's Speed Demon. It's a really good Firebird-esque disc and just needed to miss that tree. That was looking real nice. Marvin going back to that PD2. This is a Champ PD2. Gets a nice height on this one and this is just too easy for Marvin. His arm just doesn't bend the way that most people's do. Unbelievable shot. Dalton showing us this backhand line here. This is his Star Leopard 3 and this goes back door. Checks up right at the basket. That'll be about 20 foot for his birdie. Corey going back to that speed demon. 
Devil Hawk, excuse me. This is Devil Hawk, and uh, yeah, up and down, that's how you do it. Bobby with about 60, 50 in for a birdie. Decent run. It's be a really nice bounce back for Dalton. 20, 20 foot birdie putt. Yeah, great shot. Dalton never takes much time with his birdie, just kind of lines it up and uh, throws it in. Confidence through the roof. Real nice putt for Corey there. One of the easier holes on the day for sure. But a real nice tap in. Great shot from Marvin. Trying to get some of that lead back. Marvin goes to minus five. Bobby's going to tap in his par here at minus six. We got a battle up at top. That's going to bring us to our last hole on this front nine. Hole nine, par three, 329. Signature, signature hole on this course. The basket is parked up on top of these absolute Rick, uh, excuse me, rock rock mountains up here really signature fun hole you want to throw something nice on low on forehand and kind of skips up towards the basket uh tendency to roll away long happen a lot really fun hole we're gonna see marvin with a discraft extreme then a little softer and kind of sits right behind the rock there real nice shot Dalton going back to that, uh, he's going to an orbit felon here. And I think if he missed that tree, it would have nestled up real nice. Dalton with an open bag, throws a kind of a little bit of everything, uh, but a really, really fun player to watch. This is Bobby's Atlas here. And this never kind of turns over. And this thing is just glidey. It goes forever down the hill. That'll be about 80 to 100 feet back into the pin. Corey with a really nice looking forehand here. This is his blade. Checks up real nice. That'll give him a kind of a death putt, which all the putts on this, this hole tend to be, but really nice looking shot out of his hand. This is Bobby's upshot. Just looking to get it up there and sit, which is a really hard thing to do. Technically, he's a wizard, though. That's a really nice shot. Really tough putt for Dalton here. This is death putt to the extreme. Yeah, great putt. Great catch confidence really nice back-to-back -back for uh, Dalton putting him at even through nine Corey with a not so easy putt as well and just bounces that one in really nice birdie to finish the front nine putting him at plus four Marvin gonna tap in his birdie that's gonna put him at plus uh, excuse me minus six Bobby's gonna tap in his par we got a tie for the lead up top I told you this was gonna be a good one Really fun front nine, guys. Thanks so much for watching with me. We got Marvin at minus six, Bobby at minus six, Dalton not too far behind, but he's over at even. A couple guys in the plus area. We have a really fun back nine for you guys. Thanks so much for watching the front. Again, this is Jim from Disc Golf Bra. Stick around. You're going to want to see this battle between friends, local legends. It's going to be a good one. Guys, we'll see you on the back nine. Thanks again to Heiser Disc Sports. We'll see you there.